Obama will send his jobs bill to Congress, and it's happening this evening. And later on this week, he'll explain how to pay for it. That's going to be in a second speech. Good. But many say this is just one more stimulus. South Carolina Senator and member of the Armed Services Committee, I can get it out, Lindsey Graham joins us. Good to see you Good this morning, morning, Senator, on the curvy couch, no less. This um, military working dog segment? Yes, it's coming up. You can go to sleep up. during my segment, but come back for that. Oh, please don't go to sleep really during good. this segment. But we're looking forward to that. That's coming Absolutely. up. Brian will interview them in about Sorry 30 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, were you surprised at all when the president uh, unveiled his plan Thursday night? Did anything jump out at you as I was as surprised. New? I said, you must pass this plan, and I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was sitting by Bob Corker, and I said, you know, what is the plan? Pass this bill. I'd like to see it first. Here's what I fear. <clears throat> you know, there is an opportunity for infrastructure spending. Panama Canal is going to expand in 2014, and ships on the ocean are going to be three times the size they are today, and all of our ports need to be deepened and expanded to accept these new supercargo ships. I would like to have a national vision about how we become an export country, change our port infrastructure. I could work with the president on that. Here's my fear. Because of Obamacare, because of the regulations coming out of the EPA, because of the uncertainty of the tax code, what will the tax bill be in 2013, what will be a health care bill. I'm not so sure anything we do on the stimulation side is going to create jobs because his policies have stifled job creation. Until you change your policies, you can keep throwing money at this problem. It's not going to change. Well, the president's going to go on the road with this message. Have you noticed a differ, somewhat different approach now as opposed to the debt ceiling debate and the lame duck uh, uh, debacle that we witnessed where both sides just locked in and yeah. just drew Well, it? he's got his back against the wall. He's trying to sell his presidency here. But the problem with job creation, if you had a business and you had some cash, would you expand your business not knowing what your health care bill is going to be in 2014, mm -hmm. not knowing what your tax bill will be in 2013? And if you're in manufacturing, not understanding exactly what the EPA is about to do to your business, the only way you're going to create jobs is to replace this administration. Mm -hmm. So uh, he says he's going to pay for all this. He's going to come up with a way. He says other people are going to pay for but, this. But, yeah. Well, his spokesperson told me. <laughs> this committee. His spokesperson told me that he's going to pay for it. So, so let's take him at his word, at least for this part of the discussion. How? If that's the case, right? I mean, he hasn't told he? us yet. Next oh, Monday okay. he will. But let's say that that it is paid for. Okay. Would you consider voting for it? I would consider working with the president on infrastructure spending. That was our stimulus bill. His $787 billion stimulus bill doubled the size of government. We had a bill actually that spent money on infrastructure, helped the unemployed, and cut taxes. He's going back to where we started. I would work with the president, but I'm not going to raise anybody's taxes in this environment to pay for it. So, Mr. President, if you want me to raise taxes on job creators to pay for this bill, I can't help you. If someone wants to know what's going on on the international <clears throat> stage, especially when it comes to the two wars, they'll go to you, John McCain, Joe Lieberman. You, sure. you go to the wars, you, you talk about it, and you're open. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolford, it's both way in, and they say they're really concerned about the massive <clears throat> drawdown in Afghanistan yeah. as well in Iraq, and it could affect terror here. How do you feel? Well, Diane Feinstein said that 3,000 troops in Iraq is woefully Democrat, inadequate. Democrat, right? She's a good lady. She's the chairman of the Intel Committee. If we go down to 3,000, we will not have enough troops to do the missions we need. Counterterrorism, intel collection for the Iraqi army, sovereignty, and to protect about 30,000 American civilians. It would be one of the biggest blunders in American foreign policy to lose Iraq because you had 3,000 troops when you need 10 to 15. So is it a political move? I have no idea. No general has suggested anywhere near 3,000 troops. It's okay as commander-in-chief to disagree with the generals, but it's not okay to take their advice and throw it uh, in the garbage can. No one has suggested anything really from the Pentagon below 15 to 16,000. It would be a political decision. No one suggested pulling all the surge forces out in September of next year because that shortens the fighting season. It wasn't an option presented to the president. It was an option created by the president. This is the Obama-Biden plan in Afghanistan, and 3,000 troops in Iraq would be a formula for disaster, and Iran would love that. They're trying to destabilize Iraq. Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, great to have you on set with stay us today. Stay for the dog segment. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, and stay the whole show. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much, Senator. Good to see you in New York. All right. Meanwhile, New York Times uh, columnist uh, says George